Welcome to another Remix single. This time we're going to talk about optimistic UI. So what the heck is optimistic UI? Um, <clears throat> we often talk about optimistic UI along with pending UI. We've already seen pending UI. So we've got a couple bits of pending UI here already. If I add Peter Parker in here, uh, Praker, <laughs> and I hit this add button, the add button goes into a pending state. See, watch. Adding. And then uh, Peter Parker's up there. I also have a pending state on these delete buttons. When I delete, it fades out <clears throat> before it disappears. So those are pending states or pending UI. Optimistic UI says, you know what? Let's not even wait for the browser to do its thing down here on the network. We already know what the server is going to do. Or at least we're pretty sure <laughs> what the server is going to do. So if we have that much information in the client already, let's just immediately update the UI and eliminate the pending states. So the question that always comes up then is like, well, how do you handle errors? So we'll, we'll see how to do that too. So if your optimism fails, what do we do? Uh, let's start with the delete buttons. Those are, those are probably the easiest way to do it. The optimistic thing to do here is just hide that list item when it's being deleted. So I'm gonna come down to our person item. That's the, that's the list item for each one of these uh, rows. I've already got this is deleting, so I know if I'm deleting it already. And that's how we're adding the pending UI of uh, changing the opacity. So the optimistic thing to do here would say, you know what, let's not change the opacity. Let's make this hidden if we're deleting. Uh, oops, I spelled that wrong. <laughs> hidden, not hidden, hidden. Okay, save that. Let's see how it looks over here. So clear out the network tab. Gonna delete Happy Hogan. Boom, just gone immediately. Optimistic. And then we were right, it worked out. We went to the network, the network, or we went to the server, the server deleted it. Uh, we revalidated the, revalidated the data, it came back, and now we have our new uh, loader returned, our list of users without Happy Hogan in there. So our optimism was not misplaced. All right, so let's, um, Let's make this kind of rough. Let's say we're gonna put a try catch around here. Or not a, let's not even do a try catch. Let's just like blow up. What if it doesn't work? Kaboom. Now what does our UI do? Let's delete Aunt May. Ah, unexpected server error. So uh, this is the root error boundary of our app catching this error and giving the user something to see. I probably should have made the error boundary, boundary video by now, but we'll, we'll get to that one later. But we could put an error boundary on this route and give the user an easier way to recover from this error. Remix will handle the error for you by default. Uh, so you can do this optimistic UI stuff and know that if something blows up on your server, it's gonna show up uh, for the user in the error boundary. But maybe you wanna have more control over this. Maybe you wanna, um, well, let's, let's, just, let's just say, all right, I thought about an error. See, that's what error boundaries are. Error boundaries are, you didn't think about errors, put an error boundary right here, and now you kind of thought about errors. But if you're actually thinking about errors, you're like, you know what? This database thing might not work, and I don't want that big error boundary to show up. So uh, what can we do in this case? Let's, let's do a try in here, uh, and then we'll catch it. Uh, and then up here, let's do like a math.random that's greater than 0.5. Then we're gonna throw a new error. Kaboom! Uh, and if we get an error, let's just say error true. All right. <clears throat> I'm not gonna do anything with that error object or anything, but I thought about it now, right? I thought like, okay, I, I know that I'm doing optimistic UI. So when you start doing optimistic UI, you, you generally should start thinking more about, uh, well, what if this action fails? Um, I don't personally like relying on the error boundaries for optimistic UI, even though I think they're still great for that. So here, uh, so I'm, I haven't done anything else in my, in my UI to deal with this, but let's just see what happens by simply catching the error in our action. If I try to delete Aunt May, actually, no, I don't want a random thing here. I want, I'm just gonna throw it every time. Okay, so what do we get? Aunt May comes back. 
Stephen Strange comes back. Oh, I got two Ant Mates. I need a Happy Hogan in there. Just comes right back. So that that's not terrible. We can do better. But that's not that's not bad. It's like, ah yeah, you know what? The app tried, it didn't work, and then a user will just be like, how many times can I try to delete this and then it won't work? So anyway, how do we make this even better? Let's uh let's actually do I'm gonna make this random now. If math.random is greater than 0.5, so it'll sometimes work and other times it won't. Now I can come down into my component code with this fetcher, and that data that I returned from my action is gonna be avail available on fetcher.data. So fetcher.data is a lot like use action data. And it's also like use loader data, but we're not, we're not using fetcher that way right now. So uh, the dot data on fetcher is if we've gone to the server, made the post, and then the action sent us some data back. So we can say, uh, is failed delete. And uh, I guess that's deletion. I think that's correct English. Um, my children say grammarous. I think that this is a lot more grammarous. Uh, so, all right, so I'm gonna say if fetcher dot data, if I've got data and if there's an error on it, then that was a failed deletion. Now I can come down here to this button. I can say, you know what? Uh, is failed deletion. I can say retry. Otherwise, let's still do this times thing. And then my aria label I want to change also is failed deletion. Now it's going to say retry or it's going to say delete. And then I actually I want to turn this all red. So I'm going to say color is is failed deletion red. Otherwise, nothing. That's it, right? I'm just I'm just asking Remix for the data that it's managing on this fetch. Let's see how this looks. Ha! <laughs> Retry. Worked. Aunt May. It worked. Stephen Strange. Oh man, that 0.5 is uh, we're we're getting lucky here. Ah, not bad, not bad. I think that's pretty cool. Um, what else do we want to do here? Oh, I just want to make a note, like, if your server actions are like, if your database writes are failing more than like, 0.01% of the time, <laughs> like you've got validation problems. You really ought to be adding some validation issues in here. Um, it, it should work most of the time, but one of the reasons that we don't do a whole lot of optimistic UI in web apps is because dealing with these errors is hard. What do we do when it fails? And you can see here that it's it's really, it's not much. It's You just gotta take half a second to think, okay, at, at what point might this fail? Wrap it in a try catch and then catch the error and then return whatever whatever you need for the UI to render something. And then down in your component, it's just gonna be there for you on fetcher.data. And then this error part, that's, a, that's yours. That's not, that's not Remix. You could have called this like, um, I don't know, whatever. Uh, and now it's just a piece of state that you branch on like anything else to change your UI and then Remix and React uh, take care of it from there. So really nice. There's one more bit of optimistic UI that I want to do here, and it's this form right here. So if I add, who am I missing? I got Aunt May in here. So I've got this um, pending UI on the button. I want to just put that into the list. I already, I already know the information. I can just put it there. In a real app, I might use a fetcher here too. Um, you know, if I'm adding a list of people really fast, I can type pretty quickly. And so I might want to be able to just add things a lot and have a bunch of additions happening all at once. Um, but for this uh, video, I'm just going to use the normal form to show that we can do optimistic UI both for fetchers as well as for normal navigation transitions uh, when we when we model it as a when we model our mutation with a form and a and a navigation. So, what does that look like here? 
Well, we already know is adding from previous video, so we know if we're adding a new record. So all we really need to do is come to this list where each of the people are being rendered and then render one more if we're adding the one that we are sending to the server. Uh, I think I posted a new one. Yeah, so look at this. So when I filled out this form and created Aunt May, I've got this form data on this network request. So this form data, Remix uh, and, and JavaScript, the DOM, uh, serialized the form into this form data object and sent it over the network. That form data is available to you. We don't have to control these components in this form just to get the state out of them. Uh, the browser and Remix already got that state for you. So if we are adding, then all we need to do is say, uh, and it's, it's kind of long, but it's all right. Transition dot, you know what, let's shorten it up. Um, let's get our, yeah, nah, I'll keep it long. Our transition dot submission has information on it, like what's the action, where are we posting to, what's the ink type, what's the form data key method. So we're going to the form data here and we'll say get. Over here we can see that we are sending first name. That's because we named our element first, or gave our input a name of first name. So that's the first name. Uh, I'm going to want a space there. And then I'm going to do the last name. Take it for a spin. Who am I missing? Peter, Happy, Hogan, Michelle, Aunt May, Stephen, Strange. Add. Look at that. It showed up immediately. That's cool. So I could actually get rid of all the pending UI here and just stick with the optimistic UI up there. I'm wipe those two out. Let's see how that goes. So now, this is, this is where it gets kind of interesting. Now you, make, you sometimes make different decisions here. Um, I was clearing the form out. I was resetting the form when my is adding came back, meaning that I was done with the submission. But now I actually think I just want to like clear out the form immediately, right? Like, like right away. So this, uh, this is adding, I want to switch this from when the adding goes back to false. That means that the whole thing's done. So now I actually want to do this now, immediately. They just submit it. I popped in the optimistic UI, and so I want to immediately wipe out that form so they can start typing really quickly. Kind of, kind of interesting. So here we go. Stephen Strange. I'm going to hit enter on the keyboard. We should see Stephen Strange pop into the list right underneath Aunt May. The form should reset and the focus should move from this field over to that field so that me, the user, can just start typing again. Here we go. Add. That is cool. So cool. <laughs> kind of nice. Uh, we notice the delete button pops in there. Um, this is a decision that takes a little bit more work one way or the other, but uh, basically this component and this component are, are the same, right? So. When I build optimistic UI like this, I find that I have these pairs of components. I've got, um, I've got the one that's real, uh, that like actually came from the database, and then I've got the one that's not totally there yet. We're still baking this one. So I like to have, uh, have two versions of it. Uh, sometimes you have a prop that's like, um, is optimistic. I like to do that sometimes too, and now inside of person item, um, I could like, show the delete button or not, but there's always some controls that you may or may not want to have in there when it's optimistic. You can still make it work. Um, you can make it look exactly like the rest of them. It just takes a little bit more work on, uh, on your part to make sure that before you do a deletion, you've got a real record or just that your backend knows how to deal with it if that record isn't actually there anymore. Um, yeah, this is, this is the easy way to do it. Have two components. One doesn't have the extra controls. The other one does, and it only shows up for a minute or for a second, really. So uh, there we go. Uh, check this out. Check it out. This UI is just so snappy and cool. Oh yeah, I want to retry that. Retry. Oh yep, now she's gone, it worked. Delete that one. Add more. Uh, this, this add button going into a pending state is kind of weird. I don't want to do that anymore. Now that I have optimistic UI, 
I'm going to go right back to add. Um, I'm going to put the delete button on there. Let's put the times in it. I would probably make this a different component. Um, but I'm going to have it be disabled until like so, so that if they click it, it doesn't actually do anything because this isn't a real record yet. We're still we're still sending it off to the server, uh, but I should just get less uh, bounciness and jumping around. Uh, so let me wipe all these out, and now we're going to say Peter Parker and Aunt May. Happy Hogan. Oh, this is getting disabled too, which I guess that's fine. That's, that's actually probably why I would use fetcher here instead of um, a normal form. Uh, so I'd use a fetcher form, because then this add button uh, wouldn't need to go disabled um, uh, in between those, those states. But anyway, now you can see that, that like adding a couple touches right there just changes this from like web 1.0 forms and waiting and, and then sort of like the, the world we've been in for the last four or five years where it's like a lot of spinners and stuff um, we kind of like move on to this next step of, of user interface design where we can eliminate all of these busy indicators when we're talking to the server um, because our framework is managing that part and our framework is handing us all of this state that we're sending to the server. So we really don't have a lot of stuff that we need to manage here. We gotta, we gotta be very expressive and just say, all right, here's, here's what I wanna do when, uh, when, I'm, when I'm deleting you know, you come up with these words that really help you out. If this if this is a failed deletion, um, then let's let's do this. That's it. Pretty cool.